What's up, I'm Triple Shoot, Apex Legends Season 22 is out, and in this quick optimization guide, we'll be getting the best performance out of the game. Let's go ahead and do it. This video, as usual, is only going to cover in-game settings. It's not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find Windows 10, 11, as well as NVIDIA optimization guides there too. Now, some things have changed since the previous seasons. There's obviously a new map, and with that, you'll find that optimization on that map is slightly different. Performance there may not be as good as what you come to expect from the usual maps, but that of course will improve with time, especially if you're exclusively playing that new map. There's also changes with the battle pass, but you'll find a guide for that down below if you'd like to find out how that whole new battle pass system works. For now though, let's talk about optimizing our settings for a competitive edge. You can already see things don't look too good. The model's a lower quality here. So are the background banners. That's because I've changed some of these settings to the more competitive configuration already, just to make this video a little bit quicker. Head into your settings menu, followed by gameplay. And in here, there's only really two options you need to worry about, enemy health bar and enemy highlight. I'd recommend having both of these enabled just for a slight competitive edge. Everything else is your preference. Down at the very bottom here, you'll find incoming damage feedback. Setting this to 2D also helps clear out a little bit of visual clutter. On the video tab is where we'll get most of our performance for the game. The top section is the display section, and here, simply make sure that your display mode is set to full screen for the best possible performance. Aspect ratio and resolution should both be native to your monitor. If you have a 2K monitor, set it to 2K, 1080p, 1080p, etc. That way, everything should be super crisp and should look the best that it possibly can on your system. Anything that's not native is going to look a little bit blurry or use more performance to give you the same look. Brightness is your preference. Field of view is your preference as well, even though it does technically affect performance. If you like having more field of view, crank it all the way up. I feel like that gives me a better gameplay experience, but set it to whatever you want and leave it there. Performance shouldn't matter when it comes to a competitive edge based on what you're used to. These other options here, I'd recommend ability scaling set to disable, that's your preference. And finally, sprint view shake, have this set to minimal for less view shake, and of course, a slight competitive advantage. Then, the best settings for a competitive advantage are right below in the advanced settings. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll have the NVIDIA reflex option here. Make sure that it's set to enabled or enabled plus boost if you have a lower powered CPU and a higher powered graphics card. For me, they're both equally matched, so I'll set it to medium, and that's that. Everything else you'd be dropping all the way down to the lowest possible setting to get a competitive edge. The only thing I would raise is probably texture filtering over here to Anisotropic 2X, just to make sure textures don't look too bad. With that, you've now optimized your game for the best possible competitive advantage. You can apply. We'll go through the config in just a moment where you can get even more of a competitive edge. But for now, if you hop into a game after restarting it, that is, you'll see that things look a little bit mushy and you'll be getting some really good performance. If you'd like ultra competitive settings for an even better FPS advantage, go ahead and close out of your game to the desktop and we'll be playing with some things from here. Hit Start and E, which is the Windows key and E to open up a new file browser. And in here, we'll be navigating to C Drive, followed by Users, then your username. And in here, you should be able to scroll down until you find Saved Games. Open up this folder, then you'll find Respawn inside of here, Apex. Open up the local folder, and inside of here, you'll have a video config.txt file. Open this with any text editor, Notepad is good enough, and you'll see something like this. It may look slightly different, it may be completely empty, or maybe even this video config.txt doesn't actually exist at all. In which case, you can right click new, followed by text document, and just rename it to video config, or lowercase one word. Anyway, open it up with a text editor, and in the description down below, you'll find a link to GitHub. The page down below looks something like this and all you need to do is click the raw button in the top right then copy everything here select everything paste it and save it there's only one setting you need to worry about before you close this file simply scroll down and you'll find your default res and default height this is your width and height of your monitor if you're using anything other than a 1080p screen type in your resolution here so 2k is 2560 by 1440 and that's that i can save the file and close it if you're on a 4k screen set this to 3840 by 2160 and save the file your resolution may obviously be slightly different mine is 2k 
Save it using Control S and close this file. Now, congratulations, you're using the most optimized settings for your config file. There's a couple more things that we should do, and one of them is actually a little bit new. When we head across to Steam, simply right-click Apex Legends and choose Properties, where on the General tab, you'll now find Launch Options. This is in a slightly different place in the EA Desktop app and Origin, but you can use the exact same launch options there. I've got plus FPS underscore max zero to uncap my frame rate. Just keep in mind, if you want to lock your frame rate, consider using a third-party program like Rivertuna in order to do it for more consistent frame times. Then the no vid option allows you to skip the intro video, or at least part of it, and makes starting up the game a lot faster. You may have seen that my game launched in DirectX 12 mode because of the text in the bottom right. If you want to try out DirectX 12 mode, simply add this launch option over here. It changed in season 20 or 21 to this launch option here, so just keep that in mind. If yours has anything else, you're not actually playing in DirectX 12 mode. DirectX 12 mode isn't going to give you better performance on most systems, but on some, it may give you a better, smoother feeling experience, more consistent frame times and things like that. For me though, it actually just causes me to lose frames, so I'm not going to keep this in here, but it's definitely worthwhile playing around with it turned on and playing around with it turned off to see what kind of performance difference you're getting. And that is where the previous optimization guide ended. However, there's one extra launch argument I'd recommend putting in here for a small competitive edge, and that is this over here. Plus, CL locale is softened one. What does this mean? Well, essentially, when you're in combat with other players, there's tons of blood and stuff like that on your screen whenever you're hitting them. This option turns that blood splatter into a small little red flare that flashes on your screen. It's just a little bit softer to see and helps clear up visual clutter at least a little bit, making it more obvious when you're hitting enemies and things like that. This is added because of a locale restriction. I think it's Japan that has different regulations on games, but anyways, this can give you a small competitive advantage. It's not really going to help your frames, but if you like how this looks compared to the usual blood splatter, then I definitely recommend adding this. This was only recently discovered, and tons of people have been liking it. That's why I'm including it here as well. Once you've done that, you're able to fire up the game as we've fully optimized it. So now you can enjoy the game with a small competitive edge. That being said, the game does look a little bit soft, and you'll see especially so in the banner on the background, the play model here, and if we load into the firing range, you'll see that things just look super soft. There's a certain look to them that I don't necessarily like, but it is going to give you the highest possible FPS. Here I've opened up River Tuner for the FPS overlay, and you can see I'm running at a solid 144-ish FPS, which is pretty good, but things just look rather plasticky, as you can see here. This is the optimized competitive edge. It's using as little VRAM as possible. Textures are being loaded in in this lower quality state, and of course, this is the best way to play the game for a competitive edge. Personally, I just don't like how weird everything looks, and there's one option I'd recommend raising if you don't mind sacrificing a couple of FPS. Hit Escape, head across to Settings, followed by Video, and in here, scrolling down, I'm going to be raising the Texture Filtering option here all the way up to the Max, Spot Shadow Detail to Low, Sun Shadow Coverage to High, and scrolling down, the Model Detail I'll raise to High as well. The Map Detail over here is set to High by default. You can consider lowering this, but keeping it to High makes the ground look just a little bit better, but they may be a little bit more foliage, like grass patches and things like that. If you want to turn them off, you can set this down to Low. That config example that I copied and pasted earlier doesn't have this new option as it's been added in the last season or two. I'll see if I can add it there somehow, push an update to the GitHub page just so that's updated for you, but for a competitive advantage, you could technically lower this. It's not going to make too much of a difference. And we'll also need to raise the texture streaming budget, probably to around low over here. I've heard that people need to set this to half of their VRAM in their graphics card. If you have a 12 gig graphics card, set this to six and leave it there. Otherwise, if you have a six gig card, set it to three, four gig, set it to two or three, etc. As long as this is above zero or none here, things should load in properly and your game should look immediately quite a bit better. For example, heading over here, you can see that this has dramatically improved and I definitely enjoy how the game looks now versus before. With that, you'll cost yourself a couple of FPS. I haven't actually lost much at all here, and that's that. Because I have a 12 gig card, I can probably raise this all the way up and not even worry about it, and the odds are that things aren't really going to change as there's not too many textures being loaded here. Anyways, 2 to 3 is more than good enough for a game like this. Now, you should have the best tactical advantage and play the game as is. You should immediately see that my game looks a little bit different to yours if you 
haven't got that option set for the flash, so for example, spraying him, you can see there's a red flash that appears. This would be a blood splatter. For me, it's just a little flare, for example. Personally, this looks a little bit better, but it all comes down to your taste. It's not going to make you any better, but it's just a personal preference thing. Anyways, that's that. With that texture streaming budget raised, you can see even the main menu looks a ton better. Personally, this is how I would like to play the game. I don't need a huge competitive advantage, and seeming though I'm only losing 2-3 to three FPS with this turned on, and the game just looks so much better on higher end graphics cards, this is what I'd have it set to. Anyways, that's that. You now know how to optimize your game for the best competitive experience, and of course, the best casual experience with high FPS as well. If you'd like to find out how the new Battle Pass system works, you'll find a link in the description down below to a video explaining that. But that really is the end of this quick optimization guide. So hopefully you found it useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao. And a special thank you to Superior Emerald for being an ultimate supporter.